The build show today is in Switzerland and we're visiting this factory right here. This is a factory built home like you've never seen before. This is so cool. You're going to like this. Come on inside. Yo. Hallo Matt, herzlich willkommen bei uns bei der Küngholz AG in Alpnach. Wir sind eine der vier europaweit tätigen Firmen, die Vollholzhäuser herstellen, ohne Leim und ohne Metall. And when Peter says all wood, he means all wood. These are even wood <laughs> nails. Cool thing ever, birch wood nails driven by a pneumatic driver and these are birch dowel pins that hold the whole wall assembly together. That's right Jordan, we got an awesome tour by Peter. The crew took lunch so we were able to shoot in this quiet time while these guys are eating. But man, what an incredible wall assembly. Literally thick wood walls. So this wall section you see behind us, roughly eight inches thick. You see it's made out of multiple layers. So about five quarter material, one inch thick, maybe eight layers deep. What's the R value calcs on that we figured out? Jordan? So for a soft wood, you got about 1.4 R per inch. Mm -hmm. So at eight inches, you're around what did we come R up with? Around point something. 12 point something. And for a double wall thickness, you have R24, which you have to do to hit code here in Switzerland. A cheaper version, instead of stacking more and more of that wood up on top, you can do a wood fiber insulation on mm -hmm. the exterior of the house to give you the same insulation, but at a cheaper price yeah. than stacking up all the wood. Yeah, and so this is not Chip and Joanna wood on the inside. This is literally a timber house, right? A, a house that's wood 16 inches thick. There's no glues, there's no off-gassing, there's no other fasteners except for other pieces of wood that are holding it all together. Super structural, super healthy, vapor open. It can dry to the inside or the outside. But as we were talking about fire, Jordan, what, what do you think about fire and wood building? Yeah, so this is something I learned recently. I always thought that wood and fire, you know, I mean, how do you make a fire? You put wood in it. So mm -hmm. the gut reaction is, oh, wood's bad for fire. You're mm -hmm. going to burn up a house made out of solid wood. But actually, it's easier to do the calculations because wood burns at a constant rate regardless of the heat of the fire. Now, mm -hmm. you can add more oxygen and it'll, it'll uh, burn faster, but in atmospheric conditions, wood burns at a certain rate. So you can easily calculate, say you want a 90 minute firewall, you can calculate how much of the wood will be consumed after 90 minutes, right. take the existing wall thickness after that 90 minutes, and you know what your load's gonna be. So you design your wall with that thickness in mind, and then you add 90 minutes worth of fire uh, of, of burn on the outside of that and All that right. gives you your fire rating. And that's what these walls are. They're 90 minute rated for fire, which is quite a bit more than our standard 30 or 60 minutes that we think of American houses with fire rated type X 5 8 gypsum, let's say in the garage. So you've actually, even though you've got a solid thick wood house, you've got a long time for that fire to go before there's any structural issues in the house, plenty of time to get out. And certainly you could add a sprinkler system depending on where you are code wise. Yeah. But what an interesting wall to think about. Literally no insulation, just thick walls. But how do they bring that up to modern standards? What's missing on these uh, solid wood walls compared to um, you know the little house in the prairie that we think of for the Lincoln Log House in America from 200 years ago? What's missing or what's different about these? Super airtight. You know, Sega, our host that brought us here, um, they make some incredible construction tapes and airtight layers, and that's exactly what's happening on these wood buildings. They're making them perfectly airtight. They're using modern windows and doors. So once you're inside that wood structure, you've got that R24 wall. They make thicker assemblies, including some insulation, it looks like, on the, on the roofs. So you may have an R30 or an R40 up on the roof assembly, and you're super airtight. Everything is taped and sealed together so that there's no air flow from the outside to the inside. So once you heat that air on the inside, it stays there. And then from a structural standpoint, I looked at some 300 year old barns up in the uh, Zermatt Valley at the base of the Matterhorn. So these wood structures have been there for 300 years and they look great, but they're bowing, right? With, mm -hmm. the, with the weight of all of the building above it, they're bowing. These are actually applied construction. Right. So you've got your wood grain running this way on one, 
and then the next layer and then horizontal sheathing on there too exactly. just like we did so, in the states so you've years got you've ago. got you're basically making a 16 inch thick piece plywood. of plywood <laughs> so it's super sound and will stay there for you know for as long as you maintain it and then what's great about it is it's natural materials it's mm -hmm. carbon sequestering so yep. the trees are growing and they're taking in carbon and then we live in them and then when we stop living in them it's a tree it yeah. just decays like another tree in the forest it normally would it's there's just, no plastics in the walls there's yep. no weird polyurethanes or some kind of chemical that you don't know where it's come from there's no drywall in the houses and on the outside they're clad typically with wood sh uh, you know cedar shingles like this building here they put them on a rain screen so there's an air gap there and that cedar is going to going to weather beautifully and then you could put a metal roof on a house like this you've got a 500 year house at least and when it's time to knock it down it's going to go back to the earth and for you naysayers out there who hear us uh, say 500 years and like oh there's no way you're going to build a 500 year house i just saw a 300 year old barn a barn that was built here in Switzerland that's 300 years old with the technology they had then. So this is the same wood with newer technology yeah. from a engineering standpoint, not from a material standpoint. So 500 years is not out of the question. Yeah, yeah, pretty cool. And the other interesting thing about this too is this is literally all Swiss wood. So this is a fur that they get from Switzerland. This is beech that they get from Switzerland. So everything that goes into these houses is literally all from Switzerland. Pretty cool. Now this factory is not big. They're only making 20 houses a year here. We understand they've got maybe three other competitors for this licensed technology. Um, so they're not building a ton of these. I'm not sure if you could export one of these to America, but from a technology, from a uh, green building, from an off gassing and a healthy house standpoint, pretty interesting. Now stay tuned for the next episode because they're actually building their own new office building, literally 50 yards from where we are here. And I swear, it's one of the coolest buildings I've ever seen in my entire life. And it's slightly mind-blowing to think that there's nothing in these houses except for wood and maybe some concrete for the foundation. And that's it. And I know the question's going to come up, how much would something like this cost? Again, they're only doing 20 houses out of this factory, so if you can even get one, I don't know. But relative to the Switzerland market, it's about 50 percent more expensive per square foot now and standard construction we've seen a lot of standard construction here in switzerland it's not u.s style construction no. so i'm already expecting the premium for a swiss made house to be much higher than what we're used to spending in the u.s and yeah. then this is going to be even greater than that so i don't have a francs per square meter price <laughs> for you but it's not a cheap way of building but it's a great way of building yeah, and that's what I love. That's what I've loved about this trip to Europe so far, is that the Europeans think long term, right? You know, the the house that we visited earlier today, it was it was a mom and dad on one level, and they were adding on because their daughter that had a family was moving into the same house. They think about houses for generations, not just I'm going to live here for five years and sell it. And what's the resale value of that? Am I going to get my money back? They think about it long term. That's something that we need to change our mindset in the U.S. I mean, we're obviously a pretty young country compared to these European countries that are hundreds or even thousands of years old. But we need to change our mindset to be thinking about thing, things much more long term. And ultimately, when you do that, based on these houses, you end up with some really beautiful things. And if you're going to have something that's going to last a long time, you might as well make it beautiful, right? Absolutely. Any final thoughts, Jordan? I think we covered it. We covered it all, I'm a guys. big fan. We'll put a link to this company in the description below. Huge thanks to Siga that sponsored our trip here to uh, Switzerland. And stay tuned for our next episode. We're, we're going to tour that other building I mentioned. It literally is one of the coolest, if not the coolest building I've ever seen in my life. So stay tuned for that episode. Otherwise, from Switzerland, we'll see you next time on The Build Show. Hey guys, one quick final note. Jordan and I got so excited talking about the houses they're building. We forgot to talk about the building that we're in here. This is a beautiful building. This is the coolest factory I have ever been in. So they believe in all wood construction, not only for the houses, but also their factories. So there's these beautiful all timber trusses above us, they're glue lamps, and then the bridge crane, this five ton bridge crane above us, there's two, tra there's two bridges on it and they are both supported by glue lamb rail so the whole crane is <laughs> held up by wood now here's an engineering fact about wood wood is one of the strongest materials 
per weight that you can find. Wow. So for this whole expanse, it's actually a very light building. Now, it's not a very good material for size. So as you start getting stronger and stronger, you have to start getting them bigger and bigger. So you see for this five ton bridge crane, mm -hmm. these glue lambs are really big. Now they're light, they're lighter than steel would be, but they're bigger. So if you have the space, you can go with wood. Doesn't work so good for like airplanes, but well, yeah. it works great for airplanes. Doesn't work so great for bridges. Yeah, for sure. Anyway, but check out these trusses too, guys. I mean, these trusses are incredible. I don't know what the spacing on this, on those trusses are, 20 feet maybe. And yeah. then the roof above that, I don't know, I'm not sure how the structure of the sandwich is that sits on that. And this was 43 meters across. They're spanning 43 meters. 43 meters. This bridge crane is spanning 43 meters and then all of the so trusses are that's like 100 and some feet, right? 120 yeah. feet maybe. Yeah. 120 foot span with wood trusses. Incredible. That's beautiful. And one last note that I thought was really cool is the shear panels, right? They have to put a shear panel every once in a while for wind. I loved how they use this really pretty and very delicate and architectural uh, steel design with some cables uh, and some uh, cool rings to kind of hold it all together. Man, such a cool factory. Very, very well done. All right, guys. We'll see you next time.